So what I've got here is our Jackson rear foil. What I'm going to take you through now is the basic setup procedure from start to finish. Show you how easy it is to put up. So we pulled up at our favourite campsite. First thing is try and get the trailer as level as you can. We've got our four stabiliser legs here. So we just simply lower those down into place. Make sure they're locked in. Wind them down. Now these are only going to stop the rock in the trailer. You can level them to a certain extent, but basically as simple as that to do. I'll just do the front one now and then we'll move into the rest of the setup. So we've got the spare wheel here. I've already undone one latch on one side. I've got the other latch on the other side here to do. It's only simply a matter of pulling the spare wheel out to the side and we're locked into position. Simple as that. So we've got our stabiliser legs down, spare wheels out of the way. Anything you've had sitting on top of the rack for transport's now off. Simply a matter, we come along, we undo our latches, little safety clip on the side of the latch there, open those up, two each side. So what I've done now, I've let some belt out in the winch, I've hooked it into the centre eye, the unit's just sitting there, it's under compression from the canvas and the struts, and it's only going to be a matter now of unwinding the winch, and our camper will basically open itself up. Very controlled way of doing it. get much easier than that. So we've got the unit now in the open position. Just going to come down here, unhook the winch line, pull it off the roof to the side and I'd wind that back up now. We're here for a few days, don't want anyone tripping over it. So we've got the camper completely open, levelled out now. For ease and convenience, for showing you how we're doing this, we've rolled the side up but it'd normally be hanging down. Doesn't really matter how we do it. I'm going to get inside, I'm going to push these frames out, do the wing nuts up, a bit of manipulating around, get the whole tent and the roof line sitting properly, and we're basically ready to put the awning up after that. So now I've come to the inside, I would normally start pushing the centre bow up first, thumb screws are undone. Just gently tighten them up. They don't have to be over tight, just enough to take the strain of the unit. Once we've got the main roof line up in the centre, I'll move up onto the bed. Same deal with these, just loosen them off. I've got a couple of short stabiliser legs in here for the corners. Push them in, we'll just hold that corner frame up nicely. So I've got this end done, move back into the floor area. A couple of our C-clip spreader bars I have here. They'll hold our roof tension out. And a couple of poles to hold up the end. Basically, it's just a matter now sliding this one up, pole in. Tension out on the roof here. Slide our last bow up into position. So we've got a pole to go in the corner, we've got a C-clip on one end, just clips around the frame, we can push that up and out, slide our pole into position, tension the spreader bar out to the corner, it's as simple as that. Took a couple of minutes, but as you can see now, we're just about ready to put the awning on. If we're only staying overnight, put the side back down on, get into bed, we're all done. So our next little phase, we're gonna put the annex up. What I've done here, I've put all my poles out and I've laid them out in the ground how I'm gonna use them. I've got the annex there ready to go on. 
I've also found our three spreader bars. They're quite unique, flat at one end, and we've got the hook in the other. I'm just gonna go over here now, I'll hook one of these in, we'll work our way back to the front, we'll zip the annex on, put the, stand the frame up. All this is a matter of finding the sock here. If you put your finger on the inside, you'll find the hole for the pole. Hooks into the hole in the frame. And we can just leave that one sit on the ground there, waiting for us to put the rest of the annex up. So we've got the sock here. If I push that back, you can see the hole there. That's in the main frame sitting back here. It's simply a matter of taking the hook in the end of the pole hooking it in there, pulling the sock back down and sitting it on the ground. So we've got our poles laid out now, we've hooked all our main frames for the spreader bars into the unit, we've got our awning here, I'm just going to take the end here, hook it in and start the zip, just like you would on your jacket or raincoat. So if you hold the annex up like this a bit, it just makes it that little bit easier to walk along and zip that up. Richie will just take it over the centre. And again, hold the zip up there for him, or wherever your helper is, and we can continue to zip right through to the end now. It's important at this time we've got a velcro flap here. We put the velcro flap back over the top of the zip, completely seals it for the weather. So we have our innings on, we've got our spreader bars out for the main frames, poles and spreader bars mounted down here. It's just simply a matter of picking them up as I go along now. So we start with our centre pole, always start in the centre of the annex, you can work your way out from there. Let's put our two spreaders on. Move back in a bit, find the centre spreader bar coming out of the frame. Hook that on. Corresponding eyelet, pull it onto the spigot. Now instead of trying to climb a ladder later on, while you've got this bow in a 45 degree position, it's easier to get under there and put our tension onto this without having to climb a ladder. You don't need extreme tension, that's all it requires. And now, when I stand up this centre pole, you can see the whole ennis is going to stand there for me as I move along now. So we've got the main centre part standing up now. If there's a bit of wind around, we've got these handy hooks on the awning. They come down into the corresponding hole in the pole. It will stop the whole thing lifting off the pole and dropping out on your head. So as, as I've got to this point now, we've got our other spreader bar I fitted to the top of the pole before. I can grab my next poles and spreader bar. Same procedure and we just keep working our way along. But our annex is now freestanding there. Stand it up. Don't worry about the height too much at the moment. We can come back and fix it up. More important that we get the tension on the spreader bar out. And we'll get our roof line sitting a bit better. Again, simply pull that down. Locks the whole thing in, stops the bars falling out in your head. So we've got our annex freestanding now. I'm just coming down to the front. Cover over the toolbox. We've got one pole here. We put that in through the spreader bar just like we have at the other ends. Goes through the holes in the eyelets. And if I stand that bar at about 45 degrees, until I can get a rope on, it's gonna free stand. So I've got my last pole to go into the corner. Same as what we have been doing. Top of the spreader bar. Other spreader bar on top. Take our canvas, put it over the top, and drop our pole down. Again, put a little hook in, holds the canvas work in place. 
A bit more tension on here is all this one's going to require until we put our walls on. So just a little tip on ropes. It's something I learned from a couple of old bushes I've been out with. Instead of just putting the rope on the top like you normally would, if the wind blows out, lifts the pole out and the thing pops off. If we take the end, just do a little half hitch around the pole, pull it over the top like that, pull back now, put our peg into the ground. If the wind can lift that up, it's never going to be able to get the canvas and the pole out. It might lift the pole off the ground, but it'll come back down as one unit and won't fall out and hit you on the head. So the last couple of things I've done, I've got the awning out of the toolbox, the fridge area. It keeps the fridge area a lot cooler. If you've got firewood, you can set it up there. It's just kept simply a couple of poles back in at 45 degrees against the chassis. I've got one rope in holding the main awning pole out here. The annex is sitting approximately where I want it. When we get the walls on, we'll do some final tweaking. My next step is now I'll put the floor down and then we'll add the walls to the annex. So folks, every time you set your tent up, how well you set it up will depend on your weather conditions. Day like today, not much wind around, we're only staying overnight, a couple of ropes in the corners and we're done. If we're set up on the beach for instance, but we're staying three or four days, maybe even a week if you're lucky enough, we'll put the extra spreader bars in. It's simply a matter of clipping them onto the frame, usually run down the centre with them, need a bit of tension on them. What that does, it stabilises the whole unit. It'll stop the canvas sagging a bit if there's a lot of rain, but if there is a lot of rain, it's important that you drop your corner poles down at least 150 mil, get the water to run out each end. Just like if you're landscaping your garden, you've got to give water somewhere to go. If it's going to pull, you're going to have a problem. So in the complete setup of the trailer, we're setting up for a week. We've got our side skirt on here. It'll stop all the draft come under the trailer. Just start at a convenient point. Gives you a reference point to work to. We've got a zip out opening there for our kitchen that I'll show you later. And as every campsite isn't perfect, you may find at times that your canvas doesn't exactly sit how you think it would. But remember, when we built the tent, it was made to sit perfectly on a sheet of concrete. Out in the bush, you're never going to find one again. I'll move from this position now and we'll get our floor out ready to go on and we've only got our annex walls left to go. So I've got our floor here, I basically just spread it out, but again, with all of these types of things, it's better off starting in one place in a corner so you can get some perspective as to where it's going to sit in the long run. So normally I'd just start in one corner up here and we just go along, kick the floor out a bit, Good job for the kids to do actually if you're taking them camping. Basically the velcro is up against the main tent. We can do a bit of fine detail work to that later. But then I'll just go around, pick the floor up, put our poles back on to hold it down. Quite a handy thing to do if the wind's blowing. sitting there ready to put the walls down. I like to put the floor down first. When I get the walls out now, if you've got grass or mud around you, it means we've got a safe place we can unfold everything without getting super grubby. So now I've got the floor out, I've got the wall laid out, we're going to put the walls on. Only a few things we've got to remember here. The elastic clips with the hooks, we can undo those now because we're going to rely on the walls being pegged down to hold this whole annex down. It's basically a freestanding unit. Once the walls are on and pegged down, there's really no use for ropes. That's what will keep it down in the wind. To start at a corner with the walls, again, it gives you a reference point to work to. If we've got that corner there, everything else should fall into place. To hook it on, I normally just pull the pole up and back a bit. It gives me access to the Velcro on the inside. I can pull it up, hook it up, start at that point, stand my pole back up, and I can continue moving along now. If you've got a bit of a help, it's always handy. Again, just remember to move those elastic clips. You won't get past them anyway. Usually before I go across, I'll stand the pole back up. Gives you a bit of head height and I can work my way back across the annex now. 
to the corner and do the final assembly at the kitchen end. So here we are folks, approximately 45 minutes after I've pulled up, I've done most of this myself, and we got our home away from home. We can enjoy the great outdoors now. A few key things to remember. Don't rush when you're putting it up. If it's hot, stop and have a couple of drinks. Go back to your pole diagram if you need to. If you can get onto YouTube, watch this video over and over again, maybe even as you're putting it up. Put your poles out on the ground so you know where you're going to start with. A little bit of organisation there will save a lot of headaches. One key point too, if you've got your car keys or your wallet, before you pack the unit up, just make sure you don't lock them up. I've done it a number of times. Nothing worse than having to unpack the whole thing before you can even open your car or drive home. As easy as that, get out to the Australian outdoors, enjoy yourself folks.